What's up, what's up everybody? Hey, Chris Record here. Coming to you on Memorial Day. And uh, even though it's a holiday, we want to do training every single day. So I wanted to come out to you. I'm out here in California. Just got done spending an amazing weekend with my kids. If you guys haven't got a chance to be able to get introduced to Reston and Raiden. Reston is my six year old who is my child with autism. Uh, he has extreme autism, but it's actually doing incredibly well. He's made in, in just unbelievable progress. And then Raiden is my four-year-old. You might know him for his wild curls, but I was surprised this weekend um, to find out that uh, he actually wanted them cut. So his mom went and got him cut. Now he's got like a little curly mohawk going on. Pretty cool. Um, anyways, I wanted to come to you today. It won't be long because one thing, first things first, it's super hot out here. I'm at Starbucks, chilling, doing some work. Um, but it's hot out here. And not only that, but it's a holiday. And I don't want everybody taking time away on such a beautiful holiday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a few topics real quick. And probably won't go into Q&A. But we'll just cover these topics and, and give you guys some, uh, some progress, something to think about for this weekend, okay? Now, the first topic that I want to talk about since it's a holiday is uh, let's talk about holidays. And let's talk, let's talk about capitalizing on holidays with your Shopify store. Now... This topic is kind of controversial because there's some holidays that are very consumer friendly and there's some that are not. For example, Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a day where we set, uh, where we remember those that have fallen, um, that have served in the United States, um, one of the United branches of the army, have served, have fallen, have basically given their lives. It's time for us to remember them, kind of honor them, pay tribute. Veterans Day is more of the, uh, that's more of, Cele uh, celebrating people who have served in the army, who have basically made that sacrifice, put their lives on the line, made that sacrifice. And then you have like Armed Forces Day where you're celebrating people who are actively involved right now in our military. So these are examples of holidays, but there's some holidays, there's some events that are a little bit better to capitalize on from a capitalism aspect than, uh, than not. So Memorial Day is not one that you would want to do. Um, I don't think. I, I think that's one that you would want to basically just keep it real, right? Keep it real, celebrate that. Whereas things like Christmas, um, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, um, Valentine's Day, all of these kind of um, holidays are incredible. Now, not only are these holidays that are more commercialized and good for selling, not only are those ones good, but there's a lot of holidays that you're probably not even thinking of capitalizing on and that's something that you want to take into consideration so one tip that I'll have for advice for you is go online and search for like all popular holidays all holidays there's a lot more than just you know Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving there's a lot more there's a ton of holidays and like maybe some of you didn't even know there's holidays that actively celebrate people who are actively serving in the military right so not only the holidays but these are really trending events. There's lots of trending events in general. So if you know about a trending event in advance, this gives you the opportunity to be able to put together campaigns for it, to be able to put together um, marketing uh, in advance leading up to the holidays. So that's what we wanna talk about. Pick and choose any holiday you want. Make a long list, look at those holidays, find products that would be a good fit for them. Now, if you want to market holidays, what you want to do is you got to give yourself some lead time leading up to the holiday. So with every big consumer holiday, here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a moment where people start thinking about it, right? When they start thinking about it, that's when they're interested in pur uh, purchasing products for it, buying products in advance leading up to it. Then there's going to be a moment where people, it no longer makes sense to buy something from your store because it won't reach the destination in time with shipping. Okay, so there's a time where people begin thinking about a holiday and buying for a holiday and then there's a time where it no longer makes sense for you to sell that item or if you do sell the item where you have to be very clear and explaining that the item may not get there. It is not guaranteed to get there in time. Okay, so an example would be, let's take like Halloween as an example. Let's say that you have some amazing trendy Halloween items in your store. Well, in order for those items to, to get there, somebody has to order them and make sure that they get to their house by October 31st. Well, if you're using drop shipping from something like AliExpress or somewhere from like China, if you're using drop shipping, then it's probably going to take a lag time of like three to four weeks to be able to get to their house. So since there's a lag time of over a month, what I would do is stop selling 
for the Halloween ho holiday at least a month in advance. Because what happens is you're just going to get a lot of frustrated customers who are going to probably not receive their items. They're going to be very, very mad. They're going to write bad reviews about your store. They're going to do chargebacks and all this kind of stuff because they didn't get their product in time. So because of that, what you want to do is you want to give yourself some lead time. Okay, some lead time. And if you're selling a lot of one individual product, you're really going to want to talk to that vendor and you're going to want to tell them, hey, listen, I need this product to ship and, and, and arrive in time for Halloween. I need to be conservative about it. Get some figures from them about when they think the cutoff date will be. And then be even more con uh, conservative than that. Because I'll tell you, people will just be upset if they do not receive their product, right? It will just backfire on you. So what I would do is... Um, what I would do is I would literally, um, I, I would literally do this. I would set a date like for October 31st. I would set a date the month before it. Okay, I would say like September. September at the end of September, I would stop selling. I would not. I would not. If I was selling products for Halloween, I wouldn't even sell them in the month of October. I would stop selling them in the month of September, and then I would already start marketing and promoting the next holiday. See what happens is. People don't even start talking about Halloween until October. So you're gonna hear all these people talk about the holidays, you're gonna have a Shopify store, you're gonna say, oh man, I should jump on this. But you're getting in too late. When it comes to e-commerce, you wanna get in front of these trends. You already know there's gonna be a holiday, you already know people are gonna go crazy. So what I would do is I would take the entire month of September and I would start showing great Halloween ideas, unique Halloween costumes, unique Halloween ideas, really cool light up stuff, really cool trick or treating stuff, really cool stuff for kids. I would find stuff and I would take the month of September and sell that stuff for shipment to be arrived in October. And then as soon as October hits, I would already move to one of the next upcoming holidays, such as Thanksgiving. So what's, it's weird, it's a weird logic. The weird logic is you're marketing for these holidays well in advance, right? You're marketing for these well in advance, well before they're even needed. And that's the key, that's what you wanna do. You wanna start marketing well in advance, well before they're even needed, okay? So, start doing that. Start making a holiday schedule, give yourself over a month leeway where you're actually marketing the month before. So take Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's like November 25th, right? So that means that you want to be um, marketing that in October. So the month of October is your Thanksgiving. That's the time where you're really selling a lot of goods and services is in the month of October, not in the month of November, even though Thanksgiving's in November. That's the kind of logic that you wanna be able to apply to all of your, fa all of your Facebook advertising because you're drop shipping. Now, if you have a, here, here's the one difference. If you have a very hot selling item, let's say you have an item that you're selling thousands of units of, there's one super hot selling item that's on fire. Here's what I would do. I would bulk order that product to be able to arrive to my house or to my warehouse. And then what I could do now is I could offer like a one week shipping inside of the United States. So by bulk ordering that product, let's say I ordered 10,000 units of let's say like a bracelet, that's like a really cool Halloween, maybe pumpkin, it lights up, it's cool for kids. Kids get to wear their pumpkin watch, it lights up, it glows in the dark, parents feel safe because the kid, they can see their kids, stuff like that, right? You find a really cool idea like that. And now what you do is you start selling that item. Well, if that item's selling like hotcakes, bulk order like 10,000 units or as many as you can afford if you feel comfortable with it, maybe a thousand. And now what you're able to do is now you're able to extend your selling period because now even though the product will no longer reach the customer directly from China because it's going to take several weeks to get to the house you have them at your house or your warehouse so you can you can ship them yourself and continue that and even though some of you might think okay well that's work I want to be hands off well that's the kind of attitude you should have is be thinking smart be thinking how can I extend these holidays because they're viral they're trendy and that's how you make money so again some basic takeaway for holiday marketing when it comes to Shopify is Give yourself some lead time. Start marketing like a month or even sometimes two months in advance. Okay, that's when you wanna start marketing. I know that for everybody that hit the, uh, the Valentine's Day niche hard, I've got a friend of mine that sold a million dollars for a Valentine's Day, and I know that that person um, had bulk ordered products in January. They placed a large bulk order in January and then they, on their website, they clearly put exactly when the last day was that they had to order in order to be able to reach the destination. Same with print on demand. If you're selling print on demand, contact your print on demand vendors. Contact whatever it is, the gear bubble. Is it viral style? Is it printful? Contact them and say, what is the cutoff date 
for t- that you guarantee that this item will be received, um, that it, it will be received in time for this holiday. What is that cutoff date? You need to find out. Now, print on demand can often get there a lot faster. So you start with drop shipping. You stop selling drop shipping. You start selling print, uh, you know, you start, but you keep selling print on demand. And then at a certain point, you've got to stop completely unless you have inventory, in which case you can ship it. So that's one of the big takeaways. The big takeaway is capitalize on holidays. They're super trendy, super viral. You get a big spike in sales. Give yourself leeway. As soon as people start thinking about the holiday is when they're gonna buy. So for example, for Valentine's Day, they're not gonna buy until most of them aren't really gonna start buying until after January 1st because you're gonna have the the Christmas holiday, then you're going to have the um, New Year's holiday, and then as soon as that's over, people are thinking about the next holiday. So now they're already starting to think about Valentine's Day, right? So that's how you wanna play. You wanna kinda do this holiday jumping, holiday to holiday to holiday. And now remember, if you're drop shipping, give yourself leeway time. If it's print on demand, contact them, find out, and you can always bulk order, okay? Holidays make an, an, a very good opportunity to sell. Now, let's keep moving. Let's move off holidays. I wanted to start with holidays because it's a topic right now, because um, today's a holiday. Let's move on to a couple other topics. Trademark infringing products. Now, I've seen a lot of products lately, a lot, a lot, a lot of products that people are selling that are clearly in violation of trademarks. Now, so let's talk about that for a second, okay? Number one, if um, just because an item is on AliExpress does not mean that you have permission to sell it, okay? Just because an item is on AliExpress does not mean you have permission to sell it. AliExpress has a difficult time policing the products on there. They have products that clearly should not be on there. They have products that clearly do not have the, um, do not have the, the, uh, the, they don't have like the rights from the vendor. They don't have, they're not paying the licensing. Maybe the products are banned completely. Somebody says, where am I walking? I'm just walking out in front of Starbucks right here. So I'm just at Starbucks. I'm just walking out in front waiting for my next appointment. So literally, you've got, you've, just because something is on AliExpress does not mean you should be selling it. You need to get this in your head because there's a lot of people that see it on AliExpress, they automatically put it on the store. No, use common sense, okay? Is this clearly a licensed trademark, okay? Is this a product that's copyrighted, right? So an example would be, um, there'll be like popular movies that are coming out and you'll think, oh, I'm gonna sell merchandise for that movie. No, that movie, require, that, that brand requires you to pay licensing in order to sell merchandise for them. Or a, another big one is like superhero stuff. You go on AliExpress, if you go type in Superman or Batman, of course, a lot of items are gonna show up, right? So that doesn't mean that you have the right to sell them. You are at risk at all times if you're selling copyright or trademark infringing stuff. Plus, what do you expect me to say? I'm giving information, right? Uh, Hold on, a little loud right there. (laughs) Think about this, what do you expect me to say? I'm the one teaching. I I cannot in good conscience tell you to go out there and do things that would be violating uh, trademarks or copyrights. I can't in, in good good faith and good integrity tell you to do that. Now, some of you are doing it and some of you are making a killing. Okay, that's your own risk. If you're going to do it, no matter what I say, if you're going to do it and you're going to take that risk, that's your own risk. But keep in mind that the consequence is that potentially you could be contacted by those companies or by those attorneys and they will p- potentially pursue your sales and ask you to turn over all sales, not just all profits, but all sales revenue to them. Also, potentially you can get your ads account banned for selling um, copyright infringing stuff. Also, you could be put on a watch list. There's a lot of stuff that could happen. Now, a lot of you are gonna argue that it won't happen, that the chances of that happening are, are so small because you're a small guy. And the truth to that is, you're right. The odds of that happening, the chances of that happening are very, very slim. Of course, I get that. That doesn't make it all right. Just because the odds of getting caught at something is slim doesn't mean that you should be basing your business model on that. Here in this group, in our training from Techademics, we want to teach the proper way to do things. The proper way to do things is this. Listen, you don't have to sell trademark infringing or copyright infringing stuff. There are millions of products to choose. Just choose some that aren't. Now, you can still target those audiences. For example, 
you can go on Facebook and you can target people who like Superman, target people who like Batman, target people who like a popular movie or a popular um, topic, like uh, something like a sports team or something like that. You can, of course, target them, but target them with something generic that's not copyright infringing, okay? For example, instead of selling something that's like a straight up like Superman logo or Superman custom shoes or a poster, with Superman on it. You don't have those rights, right? You don't have the uh, licensing to be able to sell that. Well, that that person has already seen all that Superman stuff at the mall. They've already seen all Superman stuff everywhere. Find something more unique. Find something that's extremely cool. They'll still be interested in it. Search and find ideas. Go search and find designs. Go on, go on Google, search and find amazing designs that don't actually have Superman in it. Find quotes. Find things that aren't trademarked. Find, find something that Think about this, like everybody could recognize Superman, but only a true Superman fan would recognize like one of the cool quotes behind it or maybe maybe a picture of a place, maybe a, maybe a location, things like that that are a lot more generic that the, 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 the risk goes down significantly because now you're not directly selling something that's trademarked. That's the kind of attitude that you want to have. You want to have the attitude of I'm going to get creative and I'm going to find things that aren't blatant ads. Now, here's, here's why you want to do this. Okay, if, if you are um, targeting, let's say, uh, let's say you're targeting like something very, very popular that's very, very trending. Let's say you're targeting um, uh, a, a sports team, San Francisco 49ers. Okay, instead of selling 49ers gear for San Francisco 49ers, you find something creative. Well, when you advertise on Facebook and you target people who are interested in 49ers, do you know who else is in that mix? 49ers faculty people who, uh, players for the team, marketing agents for the team, uh, marketing representations, even the lawyers, the lawyers that represent the 49ers football team are also in that same demographic that you're targeting with your ads because they all like the 49ers too. They all go to the games. So keep in mind, you're literally showing your ads, you're showing your products directly to the people that you don't want to see them, right? The people you're basically copyright infringing from, you're, you're, you're jacking their, their trademarked products. So it doesn't make sense to do that. It makes way more sense. You gotta think of your picture, your ad in the Facebook newsfeed, always think that a lawyer from that company or from that product, from that niche is watching this and when they see it, does a red flag go up and go, oh my God, do these guys have licensing? I'm gonna pursue them. I'm gonna send them a cease and desist. Then I'm gonna follow up and I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, request access to their accounts, their books and stuff like that. If they don't provide it, that law firm might take a, take a take a jump at it so because of that I don't even recommend it when it comes to copyright infringing and trademark infringing stuff here is the solution the solution is creativity creativity that is the solution creativity solves all of this just get more creative it's not that creative to completely copy things you know like I'm right across the street from subway right now right there's a subway sandwich thing there I'm not gonna throw up a shirt or a product that just has Subway's logo on it. But the kind of people that go to Subway, you know what else they like? If I'm gonna target people interested in Subway, you know what else they like? They like sandwiches, they like sub sandwiches, right? So they love those big sandwiches. So you know what? What I'll do is I'll go on I'll go on Google and stuff like that. You can make just as funny of a shirt, but instead it could be like, it could be have a do, just have it be a sub sandwich and then target people who like Subway as well as every other sandwich location, okay? That's what you do. You don't have to use the actual brand and the actual logo in it, right? That's how you've got to get creative. Get creative. Now, that being said, I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice. All I can tell you is that if you choose to use trademark infringing or copyright infringing stuff in your store, keep in mind that there is a risk associated with that. Sure, many of you are going to argue that that risk is so small, the odds of you getting caught are so minimal, and even if you got caught, you're such a small seller that they're not gonna pursue you because it would cost them more in legal fees to pursue you. And you know what, you're probably right. I can't tell you to do it though because I'm not a lawyer and it just seems wrong to do it. So if you're going to do trademark infringing and copyright infringing stuff, realize that that could happen. Realize where we stand, now take your own risk with that being said, okay? Now the last topic that I wanna discuss real quick is gonna be page post engagement ads versus website conversion ads. Okay, I've seen a lot of discussion on this in the group lately. Page post engagement ads versus website conversion ads. Still people are asking, which one works better? When do you use one over the other and why? 
So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you guys a good breakdown right now of page post engagement ads and, and, and why they work and why people suggest using them. Because clearly, website conversion speaks for itself, right? You place a pixel on your store, Facebook optimizes your ads to make more purchases. It's pretty straightforward. You're driving traffic to your store, people buy stuff, the more they buy, the smarter Facebook gets. It seems like we would always just wanna use website conversions. So why on earth are we talking about page post engagement? It doesn't make sense. Here is the explanation, okay? With page post engagement, you're buying more engagement on your ad in Facebook. Now, the more engagement that you get, the more likes. Okay, first of all, engagement is when people are taking an action on your post. If they watch a video, that counts as an engagement. If they click a link, that counts as an engagement. If they like your post, that's an engagement. If they comment, if they share it, if they tag a friend, all of that, they are engaging with your post, okay? So an engagement could be a click through to your website, okay? but. The reason engagement works and it's so, po so powerful is because if you can figure out a way to create a post as your ad that people want to share, they want to tag their friends in, it's going crazy. What happens is Facebook is going to reward you with organic engagement. So you will have paid post engagement, okay? You'll be paying for it and you will get some for free. That is called organic post engagement. Organic post engagement is absolutely free and Facebook is rewarding you. An example, you might spend $100 and to boost a post and then if you look at the stats underneath, you're gonna see a little bar. It will show you how many people saw your post because of your paid, your $100 paid, and how many people saw it organically. What happens is the more you pay, you're gonna actually see more organic reach as well. There's gonna be a little bar underneath your post. That's the easiest way to find this. The little bar underneath your post, it's gonna be a little orange bar, okay? They made it orange because of Techademics. They made it orange because of my hat. Facebook copies everything we do clearly. So you have a little orange bar because of my hat. That's why they put it there. Now, the uh, that little orange bar has two colors. It's got kind of like a light orange and a dark orange, right? One color, the darker color, represents how much you're paying for, and the lighter color represents how much you're getting for free, how much organic reach. Now, this bar is an indicator as to how successful this post is gonna be and whether it's gonna work well for page post engagement. It's an indicator, okay? So here's what you wanna do. You want to make it, you wanna to get to the point where you're getting more organic reach than paid reach, okay? This is goal number one where you're getting more organic reach than, pay, than paid reach. So whatever that bar is, it needs to be at least split down the middle. The organic reach needs to be a bigger portion of the bar than the paid reach. That's goal number one, right? Goal number one. Goal number two is for your organic reach to be literally five times greater than your paid reach. Not just greater, but five times greater. You want your paid reach to be a small little piece of that bar and you want your organic reach to be bigger. So for example, for every, um, for every engagement you're paying for, Facebook is giving you five engagements for free. Now, this is really gonna happen through people um, tagging their friends. That's where it's gonna happen more than anything. It's when people, I've, I've experienced with so many different videos, the, the ones that go the most viral are the ones where people are tagging their friends in it. So you might want to, that might wanna be one of your calls to action in the post. Tag a friend who would love this or if it's in a specific niche, you know, let's say you're selling Halloween items um, and you're selling Halloween items for uh, kids, right? Little bracelets that glow in the dark. You would say, tag a parent who would love, uh, tag a parent who needs to see this for their kids for Halloween. Now, you're specifically getting somebody to think about who do I know that's a parent that I can tag in here? And I, I'm gonna tag two or three parents and say, oh my God, you gotta see this, right? Now, as I'm, as I'm tagging them, the post is then gonna show up on their newsfeed and they're gonna get an alert. So tagging is one of the best ways to do it. The second best way is sharing. So as more people engage with your post, it's gonna, it's gonna start showing up on their newsfeeds. It's gonna start showing up on their friends' newsfeeds and it's gonna start going viral. Now, your third goal should be to get to a point where your organic engagement is 10 times your paid engagement. So if you're dropping um, $100 Look at the amount of engagement you get for $100. Your organic engagement should be 10 times that. Look at the little bar on the bottom. 
once you've got that much organic engagement, that is where page post engagement ads, PPE ads, really start to work. That is where they absolutely crush it. And here's why. Because now you can dollar cost average it. You might say, well, Chris, I'm paying 50 cents a click for my website conversion ads all day long. They're doing great. Okay, well, if you have a viral ad that's getting 10 times or 20 times the free engagement than the, uh, than the paid, here's what you do. You've got a dollar cost average all of the engagement. So what's gonna happen is, let's say that you got um, on your page post engagement ads, it's gonna show you your cost per website click. In your ads, it's gonna say, here's how much you're paying per website click. It might say you're paying 50 cents per website click, but the reality is you're probably paying way less. You need to understand with page post engagement, you're probably paying way less. What you need to do is you need to go to the stats on that post. You need to go look at the stats on that post and you can do it as an admin, right? You go, you go in and you look at your, uh, your page insights inside your page, you go, look, go to that post, you open it up, it'll tell you how many total clicks, how many website clicks that, that has had, that link has had. You wanna, you wanna do your own math. You wanna count up all the website clicks and then you want to divide that into how much money you're actually spending total. So if you've spent $100 and you have gotten 200 clicks on your ad, that's 50 cents per click. You spent $100, you got 200 website clicks, that's 50 cents per click. But maybe you go to your stats and it shows total clicks to that post were 1,000 website clicks. Well, if you got 1,000 website clicks, you only paid $100, those are actually 10 cents per click. So even though your stats are showing that you're spending 50 cents per website click, you're actually spending 10 cents per website click. That's why we teach page post engagement because page post engagement has that ability more than a website conversion ad does. Now, website conversion ads are still your bread and butter. So you don't abandon the strategy just because page post engagement is good. Here's what we recommend. We recommend both. If you have a post that has the ability to go viral, hit it with some page post engagement. An example might be a picture meme, or a video meme, or a funny video, or a really amazing video of, of, a, of, a, of a, how your product works and it's just amazing, or something like that. Now what you're doing is you run page post engagement ads to it and see if you can get a lot of organic reach. Your whole goal with page post engagement is to test it out, feel it out, and see if you can get a lot of organic reach. See if you can get Facebook to reward you with free free uh, engagement. If you can, then you can keep that going. And if you can't, then stop the page post engagement and just run website conversion ads to it. Now, another benefit of page post engagement is social proof. If you have an amazing ad, but that ad only has like two likes on it and no comments, well, people are gonna see that in the newsfeed. They're gonna go, oh, this isn't popular. It must be a scam, right? But if they see that same ad and it has 5,000 likes, and a thousand comments and, pe and people are tagging their friends and sharing, then they go, whoa, this is really popular. That is called social proof. That happens from page post engagement. So what we'll usually do is we'll run these $5 a day page post engagement ads directly to our posts right alongside the, uh, the website conversion ads. Website conversion is still your bread and butter. Website conversion is the most scalable, sustainable um, practice that you can get into, right? But Page post engagement has that social proof and there's a chance that that post can go viral. Um, we have a student in our group that posted a while back. I can't remember if it's in the group or if it's, in, if it's on their personal profile, but they spent $100 advertising a video and the video did 1 million views, okay? They spent $100 and got 1 million views and it got something like 10,000 clicks on the, on the link. I can't remember the exact stats. So I'll have to go back and look it up, but think about that. Where else can you spend $100 and get 10,000 clicks? That's really only possible with page post engagement. So don't rule it out. I wanted to basically give you guys the understanding of the difference. Page post engagement is for social proof and to help try to, try to boost posts to see if they can go viral. If it's not going viral, if you're not being rewarded with at least half organic or greater, then don't even bother with it. But you're gonna notice if you play, if you find enough, find. Find something viral, find a funny meme, find something that's really hilarious and post it and boost it and watch. You'll see if you find some really funny stuff or some really exciting stuff or some really emotional stuff, watch. People will share the crap out of that thing 
and you'll just be racking up the exposure and then you drop a link in the description and that link will start getting clicks. I showed a case study of a link getting 91,000 clicks just because it was in a viral video with no advertising. Somebody posted a viral video, or somebody posted a video, it ended up getting shared and liked a bunch, people started seeing it, tagging their friends, it went viral on its own, no paid ads, and they did 91,000 clicks. That's a case study I did last year. That, that doesn't happen with website conversion. So mix it up. What a lot of us are doing is we're running $5 a day page post engagement ads to be able to give social proof and running $5 a day website conversion ads to be able to see if we can trigger some sales. But meanwhile, try to find some viral content, try to post it, see if you guys can get some good engagement from that. So those are my tips. What I covered today was I covered a little bit of insight about uh, holidays, how to deal with upcoming holidays because today's a holiday. I covered a little bit of insight on um, trademark infringing, copyright infringing stuff, as well as um, a discussion on page post engagement versus website conversions and more. So hopefully you guys were excited about this. Let me see. I don't think I have time to answer questions. I just looked at the time. I'll do a rapid fire of like two or three questions real quick, but don't worry about asking any new ones. Okay, so um, do you stop page post engagement once you have enough social proof? Yeah, if your goal is just social proof, then just boost it a little bit, right? If your goal is just social proof, you don't need a lot. If you're getting rewarded with a lot of organic reach from it, then keep it going. Does PPE convert sales? PPE does not convert sales. Website clicks is what converts sales. So your, your page post engagement is going to result in some website clicks, right? It doesn't matter if your video does a million views, right? That does not matter. You're not branding. You're not Nike. You're not Pepsi. You don't care about branding. But who cares about the million views? But a million views is potentially like a million people that saw your ad, right? Well, how many of those people clicked the link? Those are called website clicks. That is what converts into sales. So yes, page post engagement can result in website clicks. Website clicks can result in sales. Um, we've run campaigns that have generated literally over a million dollars in sales from Facebook that have no website conversion ads, just purely PPE. We've run PPE campaigns that have generated over a million dollars in sales, just PPE. So yes, it's not the engagement that's creating sales, it's the engagement that's making it get seen by more people very cheap. And then you dollar cost average those website clicks, you can get website clicks for like a nickel a piece when you do it right. So yeah, now we're getting a lot of website clicks. They're not all super highly targeted, but we're getting a lot of website clicks. There's a chance for a lot of sales in there. Um, Alicio says, if you only have a text link in your PPE, but use it for WC, would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. That works fine. Can we promote YouTube videos for PPE ads? No, don't promote, you You would have to upload, you guys, if you're gonna use videos, you have to upload a video to Facebook. You can't promote videos from other platforms. How do you do a PPE ad on a print-on-demand product when the text is over 20%? Change the ad so the text is not over 20%. I mean, come on, advertising is just a creative. It's an ad creative. Fi figure out how to make the ad, change the ad up so that the ad doesn't represent more than 20%. Um, let's see. Let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, the reason, so somebody's saying they're not seeing the tracking in their ads for the organic reach. Yeah, when you place an ad, the only stats you're going to see are stats on that ad. You're not going to see stats from all the organic reach you're getting. So keep in mind, you might be paying lower. Like I said, you spend $100. Let's say you got 200 website clicks. Okay, the ad says that you're, you're getting 50 cents a click. But if that ad is getting organic reach, go look at the post itself. How many clicks, how many website clicks did you get on the post? You might have got a thousand website clicks. You paid a hundred, got a thousand. Those website clicks are only ten cents each, right? Much better. Scarcity app doesn't have to do with this conversation, you guys. Keep. I don't have time to answer too many questions. Keep it real specific if you can. When do I go to show content, add to cart, and purchase? You know, if you if you if you start with a really low cost of something. Um, what I, what I taught in video number one in the nine day challenge is, look, start where you're actually losing money on products, right? Because what you wanna do is you wanna start seasoning a pixel, maturing a pixel. Start where you're actually losing a little bit of money. That's actually the best way to do it. So what I recommend is like a free plus shipping offer where shipping is only like $2.95, okay? Or $4.95. Yeah, you're gonna be losing a little bit of money on that, but not much. And at least that way you can see if you're good enough to make sales. Then what happens is you start increasing the price from $4.95 to $6.95 shipping. 
maybe go from 295 shipping to 495 to 695. If you can sustain sales there, then maybe you're break even or profitable. If you're running a free plus shipping offer, then you're gonna wanna use the add to cart of, uh, conversion pixel. The add to cart is, is definitely the one that's gonna fire the most for um, free plus shipping, okay? Um, if you're running a product, if you're running a straight purchase product, like you're selling something for $20, well, I would recommend like in day one, I'd recommend starting by losing money. If you plan, if your goal is to sell an item for $22, start by selling it for maybe $7 plus free shipping and then raise it to $9 plus free shipping, then $11 plus free shipping, then 15, then 17, then 19, then 22 plus free shipping. What happens is as you continue raising the prices, you're gonna notice if you can sustain sales, can you keep raising the price and keep getting sales? If so, you've got a winner on your hands. And by doing that, you're gonna get a lot of people that are gonna to add to cart. Now, if they're actually purchasing, if there's no shipping, right? If there's no shipping charges at all, and they're happy and the price is low, then you're gonna start getting purchases. Once you can prove that you can start getting purchases, then start a new set of ads running to using the purchase conversion and start firing off that pixel. Okay? You're gonna with pixels, you're gonna need like a hundred um, uh, events to happen, a hundred fires before that pixel really starts picking up because you're supplying Facebook data. If you only supply them one person or two people, Facebook doesn't know how to optimize it. But as soon as you supply them like 100 people or 200 or 1,000 people, Facebook can start getting smart and can start optimizing your ads. Hey guys, I really don't have any more time here for questions. Um, okay. Hey, with that being said, it was fun hanging with you guys. Remember, it's Memorial Day. It's beautiful weather out. You guys, go out and have some fun today. Enjoy it. We'll be right back at you uh, tomorrow. Every single day at roughly 2 p.m. Pacific time, we go live or we post a video here in the group from a variety of experts, six-figure earners, seven-figure earners. And all we're doing is sharing strategies that have worked for us. That doesn't mean that this is the gospel. Go out there and get creative and experiment on your own. You're, there's lots of ways to, uh, to make this thing work. You just gotta find something that works for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's lesson. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I'll check those out and I'll get back to you guys soon. Take care.